Hello everyone and welcome back to the Liberty Homestead. Today, Liberty Toddler and I are going to be running a little experiment. As it is winter, it is a time to reflect on what worked last season and what didn't. Now, a problem that I had last season was the germination rate on my green beans. So I had two different batches. I had batches from Baker's Creek and I had batches from Southern Exposure. Both said on the packets to soak your bean seeds before planting. I followed those directions religiously and still only had a 50% or less germination rate, which didn't seem right for either company because typically they're really good seeds and it couldn't have been a matter of just a bad batch because it was two different companies and it was over a few different packets. So I started doing a little research on both of their websites and I went through and I read the comments over on Baker Creek and there were a lot of comments of people saying things like, I haven't soaked my bean seed since 1985. It's been 84 years. I dug a little deeper, did some more research on the internet, and again, the information kind of came up 50-50. There were personal blogs of people saying that they don't soak their seeds anymore because the seeds have a higher tendency to rot before they germinate, but all of the fancy gardening websites with the how-tos all had the same directions as on those seed packets. So today, we're going to run an experiment. We are going to plant some beans and we are going to soak some of them and not soak the others. Yes, science! The seed that we will be using today is from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Now, I have one packet soaking here in this container. This is filtered room temperature water. Now, we are going to be using the Growfriend seed starting kit that I talked about in my shopping video. This kit has everything you could possibly need and more for starting seeds. The tray itself is made out of very sturdy plastic. It's thicker and sturdier than any seed starting tray that I have used before. It comes with its own LED grow lights that also have a dimmer switch and a timer. It also comes with a heat mat and soil tester. So I figure between all of these items, we are going to be in a very controlled environment and the optimal environment for starting our seeds. And so at the end of the day, the only variable that there should be is whether or not the seeds were soaked. We are going to use uh, the black gold seed starting mix that I also mentioned in the shopping video. We are not going to add anything to it. We're just going to use it as is. And let's pour it in this bowl. Okay, and now we're going to pour in some water. You don't want it to be too wet. You wanna play in the dirt with mama? Yeah, you do. There you go, yeah. See, she knows what to do. <laughs> Look at that, you are doing such a nice job. I definitely have some mixed feelings about doing this for you guys in the winter. I wanted to do this over the spring or summer. It's okay if a little bit fell, but I didn't want to have to rely on this experiment to get my plants going in case it didn't work out. And I was already feeling pretty discouraged with the low germination rate I was getting. And that is both, I should say that the low germination rate was both in seed starting trays, in planters and in the actual garden. I tried all three. And now if we do get a lot of plants out of this, well, it's winter, it's December, so I can't exactly go put these in the garden. But, <laughs> as if I did not already have enough plants crowding my craft room. It is pretty much impassable right now with all the plants and trees in there, but Blue Lake bush beans are self-pollinating. So theoretically, whatever grows, I could save and keep in my craft room. <laughs> all right, so we have our filled seed tray. We are back inside. Liberty Toddler has stolen my hair bow and has her jammies on. 
Here we go. <laughs> okay, you want to put the cat in the seed tray? Cat in the dirt? We can leave the cat in the dirt. And we have our bean seeds now that have been soaking. Internet wisdom says to soak your bean seeds anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. So I decided to go in the middle and we've been at it about 18. Personally, I have done as little as eight and as much as 24 hours and haven't seen much of a difference. We have 40 cells here. So as long as we have enough seeds, we will do 20 soaked and 20 dry. We'll start with the soaked. You wanna watch mama put all the, be the beans in? Now the other component to this that does make it a little trickier in a seed tray is that the folks who say they do not soak their bean seeds say that they keep the growing medium very moist until they sprout. It's a little bit harder to do in a seed tray, but it just means that we will not be bottom watering and we will instead water from the top and make sure that our side that was not soaked gets more water than the side that was. Also, in my experience, sometimes the seeds just don't last soaking. Some of them do just kind of fall apart when you soak them. So those are our soaked seeds. We are gonna label them. You wanna hand one of these to mama? Hand them to mama one at a time. All right, we'll just put an S for soaked. Now we are going to open up this packet and do the dry beans. Mm -hmm. You know what, we can try it. Wanna drop it in the hole? Can you put it right here? Or that one, perfect. That's perfect, lady. All right, mama gonna do the next few. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put a D for dry. S for soaked, D for dry, and we're going to put some extra water in the cells with the dry beans. So the growing medium is nice and wet. So really what I think it comes down to is the difference really being, oops, soaking it in water or soaking it while it's in the soil. Beans take seven to 14 days to germinate. So we will keep checking on this for the next two weeks. And after the two weeks are over, I will report back. All right, we're going to go put this in a safe location. This is day six. These actually started emerging on day four. So even though it's not our full 10 days yet, the results of the experiment are starting to look pretty clear. There are 20 cells that were soaked and 20 that were sown with dry seeds. The soaked only have two cells that have started, though this one I accidentally doubled up. This has a second one coming in. And here we are now. It has been about two weeks since I checked in on day six, and this is what we have. So let's take a closer look. Here is our section for our soaked bean seeds. Not very many changes over the last two weeks. We do still have this cell here that had two accidentally sewn, and this one here, and there's another one tucked right in here. It is the smallest of all of our seedlings. We did get one right here that germinated and then stopped. So we got four, one, two, three, four, out of a total 21 seeds for this one, as again, there was the accidental double sow. This is the dry bean section here. Quite a difference. It's pretty obvious out of the dry bean section, we got a lot more. We got 14 out of 20. So there we have it folks, out of the soaked seeds, we had about a 20% germination rate as opposed to 14 out of 20 for the dry beans. I know that this experiment was on a small scale, but pretty well replicated what I saw last summer when I was sowing these in the garden. 
One thing is for sure, and that is that I am never going to soak my bean seeds ever again. Let me know down in the comments, do you soak your bean seeds? Do you sow them dry? Do you have some other method? Is this going to change what you do at all? That is it for this video at the Liberty Homestead, and I will see you in the next one.